Oh, All right, geez. fantastic. So there we go. Great. Oh, Welcome there back. He is. Welcome back, Chris. And Chris, we can't hear your audio. Yeah, I'm so. good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Let's do it. Awesome, fantastic. Well, welcome everyone uh, to another episode of the Water Cooler. We're we're starting to get ourselves a little bit more organized. You know, it's funny because uh, last week Chris and I were in San Diego, and a guy came up to me in the crowd, and he's like, he goes, "Hey, Jimmy, it's nice to finally meet you. I, I you know, I saw you in the Water Cooler last week, and I was thinking to myself, like, I wasn't really sure to be." Sort of flattered or embarrassed that he, that he was actually a, uh, a viewer, but no, we're ex we're excited to have you guys here. Uh, this um, this episode of the Water Cooler. Hey, Chris, I got an echo in the back of my ear. I think it's coming from your end. Uh, this episode of the Water Cooler is we're very excited about. We got two really great guests, Dale Chumley and uh, Raj Kazar, and we I'm I'm sort of uh, uh, categorizing these guys as our. Uh, high production, high value video marketers and our sort of low production bootstrap video marketers, Dale obviously being the latter of the two. So I want to welcome both those guys to the show. So Chris, uh, just help everyone here who's part of the show understand, uh, you know, what, wh why do we create this and, uh, you know, who's, who is this for? Sure. So thanks, Jimmy. And, you know, Dale and, and uh, Roz are going to come on in a minute. But, you know, we looked at a couple data points and we looked at it like this, you guys. First of all, we're drinking, right? So that's always cool. So this is, uh, I'm drinking a Hudipole Amber Lager from Wisconsin. I'm going to crack this for you guys. But, the, you know, the concept is that it isn't that the water cooler went away. It's that the water cooler moved online. And so Inman News, we looked at data, 42% of agents don't attend meetings at all. 93% of agents communicate with their broker less than 15 hours per month total. And so we thought, wow, what about once a week getting everybody together kind of in an office meeting environment minus the mortgage guy's boring shit, minus the vendor that comes in and does a sales pitch, minus the stupid caravan that you guys do. And we also don't spend any time talking about the expired listings and how we're going to take advantage of those. So we think it's the new version of the office meeting. We're ready to rock it. And cheers to you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, guys. So, so Chris, this, this, this episode is all about video marketing. Uh, so give me sort of your, your assessment of what you're seeing out there on the road on uh, you know, how agents are sort of leveraging video right now and how we've sort of seen a shift happening over the last couple of years in our industry. Sure. Well, it's just getting easier, Jimmy. So it's like super easy now to do a video. You just like take out your phone and like hit a button and then you have a video. You know, my man Dale Chumley, he did 365 videos in a row for 365 days. Uh, what I'm seeing is that people have started to figure out that it works. And so now they want to learn more about it. They want to know, well, if I go cheap like Dale or expensive like Raj, what am I getting myself into? How much is this going to cost? What are the specific things I can do? And what's happened, in my opinion, over the last 18 months specifically, is that the bar for video went from here to here. People like Raj, people like the Sage Brothers, you know, people that are doing just this killer video marketing uh, at kind of a filmmaking level, They've caused all the other people to go, wow, if Raj is out there making movies, I better at least do like a little video <laughs> testimonial. So this is the year of video, and I'm excited to talk about it, and I can't wait for rapid fire because I got a bunch of cool tips. Yeah, yeah. Well, just, uh, just on that note, do you think that people have moved away from – focusing on always having to be in front of the actual camera because I know that was one of the things that we always used to hear which is like people want to do video but they're terrified of actually getting in front of the, the camera just like this uh, yeah so you, you can see I, I get really nervous too Jimmy it's one of those things I don't really you know you turn on the camera and I just kind of freeze up I get all scared you know I think what it comes down to is that power starts with courage tweet that out pound water cooler power starts with courage Dale Chumley had zero videos at one point Raj had zero nice videos like two years ago. And so one of the things Darren Persinger taught me, he, he used to tell a good story at Reboot, Jimmy, which was think about the fact that if you had to make 100 clay pots versus having to make one clay pot, right? And if you made 100, your 100th one would be probably pretty damn good. But if you spent that same amount of time making one, how, how much have you really learned? So it's time to ship. It's time to get it out there. See what the feedback is from the consumers and roll with it, dude. It's it's time to stop being afraid. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and uh, every time that you start talking, you sort of like yell into the camera, so I can tell that you're excited about this topic. Um, yeah. But you know, the thing is, is that I'm I'm also wondering, realistically though, uh, for 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 most agents, like that first video. Right, and I'll get to pass this over to Dale. Dale, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Like the first video you do, 
like explain the process to 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 me in terms of you know what what that's like for you as an agent and, and what sort of the, the the fears that you kind of overcame to to get that out there for the first time. And Chris, you muted Dale. I'm not sure why. There we go. Are right, you good, Dale? Sorry, dude. Actually, he may have muted himself, Jimmy. I, I don't have control over Dale. All right, Dale. Give me a second here. All right, there we go, Dale. Still nothing. Hey, so, Dale, go, go into your settings real quick, Dale, and just click settings. It's just to the right of the square. So, Make sure your microphone output is the right one. So for those of you who have tuned in to episode one, How about now? Uh, there we go. Yeah, there we go, dude. We got Dale. Dale, roll, roll with it, baby. Roll with it. All right. So, oh, man, you know, you're right. As far as that video, and I'll say the first thing right now that I tell audiences, agents, anybody that I'm talking to, the most critical thing that you've got to do is after you record it, you've got to send it out and don't watch it back because every single person out there, myself included, doesn't like to see themselves on video. You don't want to hear yourself. You don't want to see yourself. So you know what? You hit record. You say what you mean to say, and when you're done, you publish. And if you don't publish it, you'll never publish it. Um, if you roll back to day one when I was doing that, the first day, it sucked. But you know what? I'm like, I'm going to do this thing. I wasn't even in the video. It wasn't until probably three or four weeks in that I thought, you know what? I'm doing video every day. Why don't I at least put myself in front of the camera so that the audience and the community here in Vancouver would be able to start recognizing and acknowledging who I am and the trust level. And that's the thing that was huge. When I went to start putting myself in front of the camera, everybody reached out and said, we trust you so much because they got to see my face, they got to hear my voice, they got to know what I was saying, and it gave it a whole new level of authenticity and a whole new level of believability. And that's because I believed what I was saying and I genuinely care about my community. Um, but the hardest thing for every single person is hitting publish. It sucks. But you know what? After day two, after day three, after day four, after day 300, it's easier and easier. You still don't want to watch it back. But yeah. you know what? It gets easier. Yeah, and and Dale, and Dale, on that on that note, you know, when we were, in, I think it was a reboot in Vancouver or Seattle, wherever it was, you were showing me some of the things you were doing with video in terms of your iPhone, and you were using some like I can't remember what app we were using, but you were shooting, editing, and publishing a video from your iPhone. So walk us through that process. Ab Absolutely, every single thing, everything I do is from my phone. And one of the big reasons for that is I've got to keep it simple and I've got to keep it easy and I've got to keep it quick because I'm on the go, I'm on the move, and I need to hit it, record it, save it, and do it. So when I did 365 things to do, I was still on an iPhone 3GS and I used the app Real Director. I think I spent at that time like four bucks on Real Director. I think now you can probably get it for 99 cents. Um, but I was able to record every single video of myself with my phone just like this. And I would stand there and I would record myself and I would record some of the things in the park or the place, whatever I was doing. I would build everything together right in the app, hit publish straight to YouTube. By the time I get home, that video was live on YouTube ready to embed into a blog post. Yeah. I didn't have to worry about taking extra time to bring it into the computer, pick it all out, sort it, and, and tweak it. That's great if you could do it, but man, doing that 365 days, I didn't have time to do that. Yeah. So, do do you do, did you ever feel like because obviously the discussion that we always hear is 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 the quality of the video matters because that's how people are going to perceive you. If you have a low quality sort of choppy video, people are going to sort of perceive perceive you as that person. But in reality. What was sort of the feedback you were getting from the people that, that were actually watching the videos? Not the gurus who were analyzing it, but the actual viewers who were actually watching it. What Do they ever, ever say, hey, maybe you should get a better camera or better lighting or a better microphone? Do they ever even mention You know what? That? I never had anybody say that to me. Um, people would, you know, it came down to that genuine. They appreciated what I was saying. They appreciated what I was doing. And, and I would say this. Any video you publish out there that you're at least being genuine and real and saying what you mean is better than sitting on the most high polished video in the world that you never publish. Yeah, real if nobody shit. can see yeah. it. You just it doesn't happen. Um, yeah, I think one thing, Jimmy, that's critical to point out is like if you do a video of a listing, you need one view. You know, I think I think you only need one view. 
from the person that buys it, you know? So I, I don't know that, you know, I think that's a good insight because, you know, I know Dale did a lot of video and there was actually like a classic connect about his Dale Chumley's videos to bootleg, you know? And, uh, you know, that wasn't the exact title, but the, the concept was, do we need to raise the bar? And it was, it was very divided. I mean, I was in that session and, and yeah. it was about 50, 50. And I think, you know, one of the things that I, I think you guys should be a big fan of, be a big fan of shit that works. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. over a half a million views, well over half a million views on YouTube that would say people are watching those videos. Yeah. And if you look at Ian Watt, if you guys don't know Ian, if you guys don't know Jessica Edwards, same stuff, dude. Look down the barrel, humanize yourself, and 100,000 views later, you know, you become that guy. And I, I think one of the things Brian Copeland said one time was that if you do a good video of a property, you do a good video tour, it, it creates online the first showing and then it creates offline the second showing. So imagine somebody like myself thinking about buying a property with my wife. I get a chance to see Dale, you know, doing these videos. I really get to feel like I know him. And I think the challenge is like most of the women and some of the guys too, when I see their headshots on their marketing, you know, I'm not really sure if it's them or their daughter when I go to meet with them. And so not only does Dale have uh, truth in marketing because he really looks like that, he really sounds like that right now, he also brings that human element. Uh, I, I asked people before, Jimmy, how many of you have never met me, but you've seen my videos and you would let me sleep on your couch tonight? And half the room raised their hand. They're stupid, but they did. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, well, the, the, so to play devil's advocate here for a second, I, I, I do think there is, and, and obviously Raj is kind of I think, a living testament of this, but uh, there's, a, there's a very big difference between what Dale does in terms of shooting videos of himself, sharing tips about the community. In, in, in doing video or virtual tours of a particular property because if you are, say, marketing towards a higher-end listing, like you can't go in there Blair Witch Project style with your video camera and say, this, you know, show this property. If it's a $700,000 or a million-dollar property, that just doesn't cut it. You know, so I I, th I think we got to be real about this in the sense that you know it, the context matters about this discussion. I th I think I think for me personally, and Raj, I love I love to hear your thoughts on this. But could you get away in your market with your price point with with uh, a Dale style video? And not this is not an either or discussion here, guys. It just kind of I just want to provide some context and paint the picture here. Well, well, yeah, for sure, Jimmy, you you definitely could get away with that for sure. If you've got uh, passion and you're talking about the community and getting people involved, you could definitely. Get away with what Dale's doing for sure, one hundred percent. No, so what? What? What I'm asking is, uh, is I'm asking is if you walk into a listing presentation for a one. I'm trying to get the right answer here, Chris. As you can tell, if you walk into a listing presentation with like a one point five million dollar property, you yeah. say, we're going to do a virtual tour of your house, and you show them sort of a Blair Witch style project video. Like, is that going to help you like sway the the potential seller, or do you need to step up your game? And is that hey, why Jim, you hey, hey, Raj, before you answer that, Jimmy, you look like freaking Blair Witch right now. Can you get some lights <laughs> on yourself, dude? I'm not knocking Dale. Watch my YouTube. Can, no, now. no, Wait. I'm saying right now with like it's all like people watching. You look like you're like kind of like you know yeah. going yeah. from this show to like an intimate moment. <laughs> don't, don't read directly. <laughs> okay. Just focus on it. All right, Raj, Raj. go for it, bro. <laughs> Yeah, so Jimmy, to to give you the answer that you're looking for, I could not get over that. It's okay. just not it's not how we roll. It's not what we do. So tell okay. us how you roll. Well, I mean, you've got videos up of me, so I, I think you should just play one. Yeah. All right. Let's give us a shot here, guys. Uh, now, if for all of those of you watching right now, this may crash. You know, this is sort of our standard sort of yeah. weekly event, but let's give it a shot. All right. So you're going to play one of Raj's videos? Is that the setup? That was a terrible setup. Is this one of Raj's videos? Oh, I don't see it. Yeah, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't going to work. Jimmy, is anyone watching it or is it just uh, us? I'm watching. No, they can I see it, I think, Jimmy. All right, hold, 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 hold on. Before, before we play the video, okay? For those of you on Twitter right now, under the hashtag watercooler, just tweet if you can actually see this, and we'll let it play for like 30 seconds. Otherwise, uh... All right, play it, dude. I'm watching. I'm watching, too. We'll see. All right, play it, dude. I'm watching. I'm watching, too. We'll see. <laughs> Jimmy, I don't see nothing, dude. Oh, here we go. No, back to Dale. Okay. So that was that was our attempt to play one of Raj's videos. Yeah, why so, don't we tweet that shit out instead and let people retweet it? They can yeah, watch it. Pound they're good videos. Cooler. 
Yeah, they're 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 they're, they're excellent videos. So Raj, talk, tell us a little bit about your sort of philosophy behind the videos you create and uh, sort of the story behind these. Yeah, so it, it kind of starts with kind of a vision, just stepping into the home. So we we kind of want to portray what is that buyer looking for in that community. So we want to showcase what is it like to live in that home, in that neighborhood, in that city, in Orange County. I mean, that's kind of what we're all about. We're not doing the whole Blair Witch style project kind of thing. We don't have a camera sitting on front of me and walking through the house where it's all shaky. I mean, we, we made a decision back in 12, in 2012, that our goal was video and we wanted to raise the bar in video and everything that we did. Our marketplace is million dollar plus and that's kind of where we live and breathe. And there's no way we can get away with just a, a pan shot virtual tour. So we've got actors, we've got cars, we've got four legged animals in our videos. Uh, yeah, yeah. We were on one a couple of weeks ago with a helicopter. I mean, four of us jumped in a helicopter and we're doing aerial video of a, a beautiful listing my teammate Ray Fernandez has out in La Habra Heights. Cool. Well, it's dude, we're gonna and, 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 and also uh, we're gonna get into the specifics of cost in a little bit. I know we wanted to talk about you know da covering how much Dale's videos cost. It doesn't take a whole <laughs> lot of time, but you know uh, Raj, he's got like the equipment and actors and videographers and cinematographers. So we're definitely going to go through a breakdown of cost of doing high level video a little later in the show. You like that, Jimmy? Uh, that was a teaser. Jimmy, I want to let me cut in here real quick, please, Dale. Okay, <laughs> I want to go back to you. Well, I want to. I want to respond to your question about high end and winning on a video yes. that can be low budget. So, my marketplace, we, um, you know, one hundred twenty five, hundred fifty thousand dollars is our normal stuff. Um, just did a condo for sixty three thousand, so it's like it's oh. a different price point. Um, but I would say this: this last, towards the end of this last year, I went on a listing presentation and. The difference, the final difference that made the point for me getting the listing versus somebody else, and this was at a four hundred and fifty thousand dollar price point, was my Animoto video of their house prior to the listing. Wow! So a this minute what... and a half Animoto video, and I have the thirty dollar a year account, so I can make longer than a thirty second video. <laughs> minute and a half Animoto video was the difference for the seller because of the quality of that, and you guys know how simple and easy Animoto is to do. Yeah. So just and, and, and to be clear, because obviously uh, the, this is not an either or discussion. When we say sure. low low production value or uh, low budget, we don't mean low quality. Right? Exactly. It doesn't, mean, it, it doesn't mean create a shitty video. It just means that like it's just not going to be a high production, high cost uh, type of video. Yeah. So that, that's that, that, that's that's an important point to make, Dale. So that's interesting to share that. And do you think that that's just because the, there's no one in your marketplace actually creating videos right now? Is that yep. sort of like a, a differentiating factor? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we've seen some we've seen some really amazing stats, Chris. I watched came up on the recently like you're 50 times more likely to appear on page one of Google for a specific keyword phrase if you were using a video versus just a normal say blog yeah. post. Yeah. It, it's it, the the date the date it will tweet some of that data out. It's really really compelling. So Chris, uh, I know you did your great segue in there just a moment, but let's let's get into let's get into our favorite segment because uh, I this is something everyone kind of gave gave us. Yeah, we don't have any we don't have any graphics yet, guys. For rapid, rapid fire. fire. They, thanks. That, <laughs> <laughs> so so no, this is a popular I, section, Jimmy. Tell tell them what this is. A, tell them what this is. People are gonna love it. It's good. Okay, thank you. So this is this is a segment we wanted to put together just to kind of give you guys some takeaways from the show, if nothing else, to walk away with some some good ideas. So starting with rapid fire, uh, first one. Let's talk about Sydney Hayden, Chris. Sure, Cindy Hayden, C Y N D E E Hayden. If you want a great video marketing tip, what Cindy does, I want you guys to think for yourself. Think for a second. Have I ever showed a home to a buyer that didn't buy that property? That I never saw again, right? So you go out and show some condos in St. Pete. You're having a great time, but at the end of the at the end of the deal, you know, probably like what ninety percent of those people are never going to call you back. So what Cindy does is she gets video testimonials from buyers after she shows them properties. Not after she closes with them, because most of them won't close. But she asks them very straightforward. Hey, did we get a chance to see everything you wanted to see today? Yes. Hey, did you guys, uh, did I push you guys into seeing any properties that you didn't want? No. Was I, was I professional? Was I knowledgeable? Did I know my market? And was I an expert when you had questions? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Peace. And she actually has like 200 of those. And so buyers, 
sometimes bleed you guys money. They bleed you because you're spending so much time with them. Take advantage of the buyers that don't buy. Leverage a video testimonial at the end of a long day of showings, basically just letting them know that you communicated effectively, showed them what they want, didn't waste their time, and maybe you could throw in there like, you know, was my breath not so bad, something like that. <laughs> Yeah, and just and to provide some context, she has like a quarter million views on her YouTube channel. It's really insane. Yeah. Uh, Chris, let's talk about Go Animate. Sure. Go Animate is actually really cool. If you guys go right now, go to curator.com slash H O W. So curator.com slash how. Uh, there's a new phenomenon out there on the web called explainer videos. It's called an explainer video. Can you, in 90 seconds, explain to me what your company and brand's all about. And sometimes that's hard to do, so it's just easier to do a 90 second video. So Go Animate is a free software, pay a little bit if you wanna be able to like get rid of their watermark, export in 1080 PhD, but it's very much like building a PowerPoint, but you're instead building explainer videos for your company. So if you figure like, here's the kind of people that we wanna work with, here's the messaging that resonates, and here's why our brand kicks ass. If you just take those three elements, put them into a 90 second video and throw that on your homepage, more people will understand what you do than ever before. And they'll understand your USP, your unique selling proposition, because that's something that you can explain in 90 seconds in a video, but sometimes if people have to read through your website, they miss it. So go animate.com. Yeah. There's another great one called Powtoon, P-O-W-T-O-O-N. And the best part about it, you don't have to get in front of the camera, which is I think everyone's biggest fear. Yeah. Chris, let's talk about Dreamtown. Sure, Dreamtown's a great brokerage. Hold on one second, Jim. You see I'm sneaking out of the frame? Hold on. Yeah, that's fine. I got a mini bar in my room. <laughs> so I'm just going with the, uh, I'm in Sensi for dot loop. So I got the, the Bengals Bud Light. I got my crazy microphone. <laughs> so Dreamtown, if you guys go to dreamtown.com slash testimonials, it is the best user interface of reviews on the web for real estate. And so what they did, again, dreamtown.com slash testimonials not only do they get a bunch of reviews they put them into like a categorized index so let's say somebody finds dale's website they're a first-time buyer or they're buying a foreclosure or they're a married couple or they want someone that's a good negotiator not only does dreamtown have reviews they have them broken down by review type so if you need someone to hold you by the hand you can find a video of them holding you by the hand. If you need uh, something that you know is a review about a foreclosure specialist, there's reviews for that. So really great job, dreamtown.com forward slash testimonials. One of the best UIs ever for testimonials in real estate. And there's one thing I'll add to that too, which is the fact that many people sort of stop once the video has actually been created and publish it. You know, you, you got to think next step, which is a promotion of it, either tweeting it out, posting it to Facebook, embedding it on your website, running advertising, whatever it is, get exposure for that video. Chris, let's move on. Avery Hess, let's talk about the, these guys over there, what they're doing. Sure. Well, t typically, uh, corporate video sucks, right? If it's like, hi, I'm Chris Smith, and this is my real estate company, and you should work with me. You know, that stuff's usually awful. Avery Hess has some amazing corporate videos. The user interface that they've put them into uh, is stunning. I'm going to try something crazy here, Jimmy. I know you get mad when I try this, but I'm going to pull it up real quick. You go to Avery Hess. I just Google it. Boom. And I want you guys to focus on this area on the homepage. They basically created a really, really cool uh, video uh, interface. And so you can see there's market reports, there's agent match, there's all this stuff. But if you go to the top, uh, and I think it's about or careers. I don't even know where it's at. It looks like they buried it now. What the hell? Anyway, <laughs> good well, lord. Well, what, 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 what? Because that actually worked for the first time. So why don't you show us uh, Dreamtown? Just go back for one sec, because I want I want everyone to see Dreamtown. Because yeah. I agree with you. I think they did an amazing job there. Yeah. Cool. Now here we go. So there's there's some cool stuff. One of the just while I'm on this site, I love what they did here. Yeah. They actually have a slider for just join the company versus tenured agents that's hot right there so they're kind of bragging saying hey you know she just came over from this company we just pulled this lady in from here so i, I kind of like that ui but yeah well, if you go to dreamtown.com slash testimonial uh or testimonials uh, it's going to be right here jimmy see the little player so you can see the categories took me by the hand 
which brings up videos. Or you could switch it over to uh, better than the average agent, right? So there's just some great stuff happening on Dreamtown. Uh, yeah. Sorry about the Avery Hess thing, but just Google Avery Hess videos, and you should find it pretty quick. It's awesome. Yeah, it is, and, and th th those, those are great, great guys out there we met in D.C. And you know, the, the whole point is, is humanizing your brand to a certain extent. When you're yeah. on, online, like it's very hard to see if these people are actually normal people you want to do business with. So let's talk about rap. So moving on with Rapid Fire here, just to really quickly recap, look at Cindy Hayden, Go Animate, Dreamtown, Avery Hess. Let's talk about Rap Interactive and V Screen and welcome Matt. Sure. Yeah. So there's some higher end stuff coming out, you guys. Uh, if you guys check out a couple of these services, my guy Steve, if you Google Rep Interactive, okay, uh, let me screen share again. If you Google Rep Interactive and go to their site, they do some brilliant work. They're a full service agency. One of their biggest clients at Rep Interactive is actually Coldwell Banker. So I'd love you guys to check out the work they're doing for Coldwell Banker. I'm going to tweet this out real quick, but it is absolutely the best of the best. And my buddy Steve Gatina, uh, he's a, he's actually a uh, former USC guy. So he's a USC guy. He's totally like deep in the Los Angeles scene. Check out Rep Interactive if you have a big budget, you're a brokerage or kind of a, a so, brand. So, so, so when you say yeah. big budget, what are you talking about here? Like 10,000, 20,000? You're talking, what do you, what, what's sort of the price range here? Shit, Jimmy, I wouldn't call him with less than 25K, dude. I don't know. I feel bad okay. saying that, but I can't imagine. You know, I can't imagine it's less than 25 Gs. I mean, this is not like, uh, you know, something decent. This is just top-level stuff. There's another company, Vscreen, and they're starting to do some really good work. This is okay. actually Steven Schweikert's company. So you guys could check out Vscreen. They do, like, video market reports, but they also are starting to do some pretty high-end video. And then we also have our friends at Welcome Mat. If you haven't seen what Welcome Mat's doing – it really is the best video player, uh, the best kind of video player interactive technology out there, especially for brokers. Uh, can't get their domain to work, but screw it. Um, there we go. Welcome, Matt. Good Lord. They got a tough one. Welcome, Matt. Videos. Screw it. There we go. Cool. <laughs> so if you haven't seen what Welcome, Matt's doing, you know, they're doing some really cool stuff. They've got a live demo of an enterprise-level solution. You can actually go to Halstead Properties. So if you go to Hall, I think it's Halstead.com forward slash videos, uh, or just Google Halstead Properties. Okay, uh, go to their site. I want you guys to click on their tab uh, that says Video, which of course I'm not going to be able to find really easily. Uh, but you guys get, I think it's actually slash TV. So Halstead.com, uh, Halstead TV. Do a search for that. There you go. And um, this and this and this is this is welcome Matt's work right here. What we're looking at. Yeah, this is this is all welcome Matt. And one, one of the cool things they do is, uh, you know, they're able to actually uh, do a thing called chaptering, which I think is super cool. And so they will chapter the videos. So for example, let's say you have you know six rooms that are featured in a home. When you play the video, there's a little bar at the bottom. Yeah. You can even jump to a specific room. Uh, so if you had something like Welcome Map, people could search by, uh, they could search by like all kinds of stuff, Jimmy. They could search by pool, search by kitchen, because they're chaptering each of those things. So Halstead TV, uh, great no, website. No. Make sure you check that out. Welcome Map, Halstead, yeah. Rep Interactive, and B Screen. Yeah, and, and the thing is too is remember about about about, uh, about Welcome Map is that they're not a, they're not a YouTube replacement. Because they're going to leverage YouTube for you. They're just sort of a, a, another another solution that sort of goes above and beyond what you normally get out of just publishing your video to YouTube. Yeah. Uh, so next on the rapid fire list here, we have transcribing videos. Let's talk about this here because I know that you just sort of discovered this last week. Yeah, this was huge. So I went into our channel, uh, yeah. went into the back, and everyone asked me how, uh, where this was. So I'm actually going to show it, Jimmy, because people don't know where to find it. So okay. if you guys go to your YouTube channel, boom, uh, go to YouTube. And go to one of your own videos. So I'm going to go to this episode number two of the water cooler. Uh, I'm just going to pause it so it doesn't play. But if you look right here, Jimmy, you can see this, right, bud? Yeah. Okay, so normally you'd hit, like, share, and that will let you embed it. But there's a new number right here. See this one, Jimmy? It says transcript. Yeah. So what it actually does is it transcribes the whole video. And then if I go back up here, dude, if I go up here and hit play, it actually, as the video plays, 
is transcribing and moving these words. Watch it'll start moving, Jimmy. So yeah. as the person saying it in the video, and you can see it's not perfect. But I, it's I, getting I, there. I, I, I was gonna I was gonna say I I don't think they're gonna have any chance to describe transcribing what I say, but uh, yeah. I guess it could be could be valuable. So 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 why why yeah. why, why are we even mentioning that though? Is like is there something about that yeah. that you 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 want to you know that we're sure. using? Yeah, totally. Well, it's gonna be a couple big things. One is gonna be SEO, right? So picture a guy like Dale Chumley who has 500 videos where all he did was talked about Vancouver, Washington, the name of the neighborhood, the name of the restaurant, the name of the place. So they're gonna get this uh, transcription perfected at some point. Right now, YouTube only pretty much gives you title, description, tags. and tags. And yeah. you can basically lie, Jimmy, right? You can say, this is a Paris Hilton sex tape, right? And no one can tell until they hit play. So yeah. one best practice, this is a freaking expert best practice. Please write this down. Get your videos professionally transcribed professionally through Fiverr. Fiverr, there's people that will transcribe your videos for five bucks and they'll do them way better than YouTube. And then in the back end of YouTube, you can actually upload your own transcription of the video. And so by doing it through a company and doing it on your own manually, you're gonna just give them perfectly accurate keywords as opposed to that gibberish we just saw them figuring out on their own. So for yeah. five bucks, you get all your videos transcribed and then you upload that transcription to YouTube and now it knows which words to rank you for. So here's what I'm thinking, Jimmy, you said this earlier, 55% better chance, page one of YouTube, a page one of Google for YouTube. What happens when they actually look at the words that are said in the video? That's probably gonna increase that number even further. Yeah, and, and 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 the opportunity there isn't to isn't to like keyword stuff your transcriptions. Yeah, like you know, like because we see we see this all the time with 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 uh, just the well, web. Dude, like, I heard like, people get... listen. I heard people saying that Jimmy. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do an example of that. Ready? Homes for sale in Vancouver, Washington. Washington, Vancouver. Homes for sale. Real estate for sale in Vancouver, Washington. Condos for sale in Vancouver, Washington. Who the fuck is gonna watch that, dude? Yeah, no, no one is. And, exactly. Uh, so don't worry about that. Come on. Yeah, and that and that's just something I think worth worth noting. So all right, so just to recap here, guys, on the rapid fire this week, we have check out Sydney Hayden, which is doing in Clearwater, Florida. We have uh, Go Animate, something we use personally for curator slash our curator com slash how. Dreamtown testimonials. The big takeaway there with Dreamtown, I think, is honestly just a promotion of these testimonials and plus filter the testimonials by potential buyer or seller type. Uh, Avery has doing a wonderful job with their with their uh, featuring their agents. Uh, Rep Interactive. No one can afford it, so I'm not sure why we mentioned it. At least welcome, <laughs> wel welcome. That's awesome. You know, I, I this, that guy. I can't. Remember, I keep forgetting his name. The guy from Welcome Matt, Chris. Uh, yeah, his name's. Uh, well, we have two guys: Christian Sterner yeah. and my man Phil. Phil, yeah, Phil, <laughs> Phil, Phil. Uh, Ola Phil, H O L A Phil. Dude is a genius. Like, I don't he know if people Phil. realize Welcome Mac came out in 06 and like YouTube wasn't even out. <laughs> Yeah, they're 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 de they're definitely ahead of the curve there. And then we have tr transcriptions and checking out transcriptions for Fiverr. So that's our rapid fire list for this week, guys. Hopefully, you check some of these sources out, find it valuable. We certainly did. That's why we mentioned it. So let's, uh, yeah, just real quickly, guys. We're we're doing a uh, we have we have a, a bit of a charity going on here. Chris, you want to tell the story behind the charity we're running today for uh, Bobby Howe's mother? Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm not going to get into any uh, too many details because I th I think it's a, a pretty private matter. But one of our kind of RE Net folks, Bobby Howe, if you've ever met her, she's absolutely amazing. And uh, she had a tragedy in her family. And there's a there's the ability to raise money um, to kind of help her through this challenging time. And so Dale put it out there on Facebook that uh, if I'll wear a shirt of a company, will you donate? And we got two people to bite. So the geeky girls. I want and you guys Dale. to all thank the geeky girls because they donated two hundred and fifty dollars to Bobby. You know that's Dale, no small donation. And then I've Dale, got Tribus. Yep. Eric Stegman from Tribus stepped up and uh, also did two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, I would also like to thank everybody else that's given above and beyond outside of this as well because anybody has the ability to do that. The link's on my wall. It's all over Facebook right now. If anybody out there can watch, that's watching, that can give anything extra. We would so appreciate it, and I know this has meant the world to Bobby. She didn't ask for it. This is something that, you know, was done on her behalf, and it's just it's huge. And the impact to her has been 
immense. So yeah. to everybody that has given, thank you. And if anybody watching can give any amount, it, it all helps and it all comes together. So thank yeah. you. Cool. Well, well, the water cooler is happy to be a part of it. Uh, all right, so Raj, um, you know, the question we get all the time when somebody watches your videos, right, uh, they want to know how much it costs to actually make these videos. Can you walk us through sort of how you break down the price? How you well, first off, before you tell us how much it costs to make one of the videos you create, how do you determine what to actually spend in a video that you're creating? What sort of some of the factors that go into that decision? Well, that, that's a great question, Jimmy. I get that question every single day as well. So it's not really so much. We're not really talking price. We're, we're thinking how are we going to best portray that particular house, that home, that buyer that's looking for that particular home. So everything that we're doing is outside of the box thinking, hey, this is on a one acre piece of property. There's a golf course right behind it. How are we going to best see that golf course in this home? We're going to get a chopper. We're going to get in a helicopter and we're going to go shoot it. So, I mean, that's just how we do it. We don't really think like, what, what's it going to cost? We're going to, how can we get into a chopper? First of all, how do yeah. we get the doors off the chopper? And then yeah. how do we get above that house? Yeah. That's what we're thinking. So do you do you do you because this is something I think a guy anybody who has the opportunity to read about Jeff Bezos or hear about Jeff Bezos, uh, the, the the founder of Amazon.com, one of his big philosophies, which is actually very fascinating, is this idea of think long term. Everything they do is is with the long term in mind, and as a result of that, uh, they can be much more competitive in the long term and, and make decisions that the competitors aren't willing to make. So, is that something that's kind of going into your philosophy, Raj, with the sense that these videos, whereas they may cost a hundred percent more or two hundred percent more than a typical real estate video, or even more than that, are, are you just trying to build a brand or an image that is going to be there for a very long time? Is that sort of the, the mindset of your team? Yeah, so we're, we're just dropping a carbon footprint basically on YouTube and all the social channels. I mean, video lives, it lives forever. I mean, that's kind of what got me motivated way back in 2012 when video was our goal. I mean, video lives, it's our absolute carbon footprint. I, I like and how you say way back in 2012 as a Way <laughs> back when. That was my goal. I mean, I remember sitting um, at an agent reboot in Orange County with Darren Persinger, and I'm telling him, hey, I, I want to do video, I'm thinking about doing video. What do you think about this? And we just kind of got into it and it kind of sparked a fire in me. So yeah. we, we went out and bought our, all our own stuff. I mean, we've got our own cameras, our own lenses, we've got lights, we've got boom stands, sliders. I mean, we've got all this stuff. I don't even know what the heck it is, but we're using it and we're doing it. Yeah. Do you, do you and, and Chris, you got a question, but let me just one, one quick little follow up here. Do, when you're trying to find talent, because obviously this is the, the fundamentally different than what Dale's doing and what I have done and Chris have done, you know, kind of our careers is kind of doing it ourselves. When you're trying to find talent to actually help you create the videos, when I saw you in Reboot in uh, Orange County, you had your, like, your own photographer there with you, right? So, like, how do you go about the process of finding the right people uh, to actually, like, you know, help you facilitate and actually create these videos? Yeah, I mean, that, that's really one of the hardest things, but my, my guy, Jared, man, Jared just rocks the house. You know, he was at, not only at Reboot in Orange County, but he came up to, to Inman in San Francisco for Connect, and he shot that whole video for Connect, so he rocks. So for me, what's so important is someone that's local, and, yeah. and not just local for Orange County, but hyper-local for my market. He knows real estate, he knows homes, he's got an eye for video. If I say, hey, Jared, I really want to portray this listing in this particular way, he gets it. It's a few texts, it's a few emails, it's sitting down in my office and storyboarding what this video is going to look like. So just yesterday we've got a new listing coming up in Irvine, California, and we're sitting there, we, we're, we're jumping in a balloon, we're going down to the Irvine spectrum for all you Orange County people, getting in the Ferris wheel, going round and round, we're getting a Porsche Panamera to cruise into this listing. I mean, that's just what we do. You know, that, we're getting two actors, so it's going to be like the date night video, right? Cruise in Orange County. I mean, that's just what we're going to do. I mean, it's the perfect yeah. home, first of all, for that couple with one or two kids. It's absolutely perfect. It's in in the Orange Curtain in Orange County, which, which there's some money there. It's Raj, let me stop you there. Let me stop you. Bring it, bring it. I'm going to ask you two questions. Approximately, what was the total cost for the equipment that you purchased? Can I give you a range? Yeah, like five to ten, to five to seven, three to five, two to four. How much was 50. the equipment? How much is the equipment? Ten plus. Ten thousand. Ten K. Ten K. Now listen, he went way too far, you guys. You could probably do this for five K. 
I mean, honestly, Raj. I mean, I mean, Chris, what's the difference? Five K, ten K? Really? <laughs> exactly. If you're gonna call, call. I mean, if you're gonna call one of these guys in LA to shoot your video, yeah, yeah, I got you're you. You're past that. You yeah. Know? So okay, so about ten Gs for all the best equipment. Got it. How much do you pay this guy that you keep saying is so great to do one video, Raj? How much does he get paid for one video? You can give us a range, Raj. <laughs> I, I mean, it's uh, it just depends. So this guy's on my team. He's not just shooting videos for okay. me. He's shooting for everyone. Gotcha. So, so he works we, for you. We we pay on closings. Is kind of okay. how we do it. Cool. Oh. So you pay him probably more than you would normally pay someone, but you do it on the back door, not the front door. Well, there's a little bit of front door and back door. Yeah. Can I say so that cool. out loud? Yeah, we, dude. We cuss. <laughs> we can talk. <laughs> hey, hey, a little bit of front door. <laughs> <and back> door. <laughs> If you're not using the front door and the back door for your video, <laughs> you are missing out on the money shot. Yeah, so, oh, man, censor. I, I love it, Chris. So, so listen, you guys, listen. So you're talking ten grand for equipment, five to ten grand for equipment. You're talking maybe two to 4000 for a video. The reason I think Raj has so much swagger, Jimmy, when he talks about price is because – it's almost impossible for him to not get return because he's thinking long term. He's not thinking our commission for this property is seventeen thousand and our cost for this video is thirteen thousand. Mm -hmm. So we made four thousand. Fuck that. He's thinking like three years from now, someone's gonna watch this and hire me. And, and it, I think it, that's where you have to be, right? Yeah. No, no Chris, you nailed on that. So let me give you a real world example. So for all you agents out there who are thinking about doing video, we shot a video on a million dollar listing. Okay, we did the basics. We did the house. We did an interview of a, a local resident. Um, we interviewed myself talking about the house. Let me tell you what. By the time we finished processing that video, we had like multiple offers on the home. Okay, so the video didn't help sell that million dollar home. But guess what? The owners are in a bunco club in that neighborhood. The lady's like, OMG, I, my agent shot this video, but we sold the home so fast because of everything else we do. She sent the email and the video to everyone in the neighborhood. Well, guess what? Ring. Hey, Raj, saw the video. Would you come list our home? I mean, it was like, done deal. So that one was a $900,000 home, right? So yeah. it went from one one to 900. I mean, I'm not thinking, what am I gonna rip on this commission? That's not yeah. what I'm thinking at all. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's that, I think that's the best way to go. And by the way, Jimmy, front door, back door is trending on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Go. I have no comment. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, Raj. I, I just want to say good work, dude. And if you work, where, where can people go, like right now or when we're done, to watch your videos? I, I want you and Dale both, because uh, a lot of people, you know, we act like everyone knows you guys, but not everyone knows you guys. So, is it YouTube.com/slash Raj Kazar? That's uh, it. Where, yeah. Okay. And then Dale, what is your channel uh, where people can go and watch your stuff? Uh, it, I wish it was as simple as my name, but this is a long, long time ago. So it's Clark C O R E blog. Okay, Clark Clark C O R E blog. You gotta tweet it out, Dale. We'll tweet it. Yeah. I'll tweet it out. Okay. Yeah, we'll tweet it out. I want you guys to get a chance to see, you know, Raj's version of video marketing and and Dale's because they're both <coughs> they're both critical. I mean, on Twitter, what people are saying, Jimmy is. You know, if you show up to my fifteen million dollar listing with your bootleg ass iPhone, I'm firing you. That was actually Laney Rosales, not everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, Laney. But you know, I, I think there's a point there. Like, what Raj is saying is like, if the dude that's going to buy this house has like a helicopter and a Porsche, we're going to use that when we do the video. But Ooh. if you're selling hundred and twenty thousand dollar ranchers, you know, like a lot of the ones that Dale's, dude, Dale. $63,000 condo you sold, that doesn't even buy you a case of beer, my friend. I know. So well, you just love so, doing it. So that's, well, I do love it, but that's where, so here is, like, Dude, we stabilizer. just talked front door, back door. Hold on, is this the S&M <laughs> stuff? Stabilizer. Here is the uh, clip to hold my iPhone. Here's the tool right here. Allo clip. Got it. 70 bones, 70 bucks, wide angle. What's that angle. called, Dale? What's that called? It's called the Allo Clip. And that's a wide angle lens for an iPhone, correct? Wide angle lens for the iPhone, macro for the iPhone, and a fisheye for the iPhone, and it's photo glass. It's, and then what is that bar? Lens. What, what is the benefit of that bar? Because people don't know what that it does, Dale, but it's really important. If, I mean, this is, they make a lot of versions of it. This is like poor man version of it, but it's a stabilization bar. It's got a weight on the bottom, 
So when you're walking and doing video, where I do that occasionally, if you're walking holding your phone, you're going to get some bounce. Lost my earphones. So Hold basically, on. no, it's okay. So what he's getting at, you guys, is that when you hold your camera, like if you're filming like this, you could have like the most steady hand in the world, but it's still going to be a little shaky. And Absolutely. then also Apple has like anti-stabilization, but it's not that great. So when you hold it like Dale's doing, go ahead, Dale. So <coughs> putting the phone in here, holding this, and you're holding it like this, you can stabilize here. The weight balances it out. And for simple, quick, easy things, that helps take a lot of that shake out of the video, makes it easy. Yeah, and, and just a quick plug for our buddies over at HD Hat. You know, for anybody who is shooting with their iPhone or their iPad or whatever it is, HD Hat makes a ton of uh, you know equipment to help sort of uh, improve the quality of, of that, like lenses and kits and whatever it is to hold it. So those guys do great work over there. Uh, all right, guys. Hold on, hold on, Jimmy, real quick, real quick. I love I love the interactiveness of Twitter. So Lainey just gave a great tip. There's another site called PhotoJoJo.com. So photojojo.com, but between that and HD Hat, you can find the little gadgets and the little add-ons. But what Dale said at the beginning is still the most important thing. Like you know, you can buy uh, third-party accessories until you're blue in the face. But if you don't hit record, publish, and send, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it, it, it does. It. And I think there's also one thing, and Dale, you just show that the piece of equipment that helps you stabilize the video. If there's anything about video that people cannot tolerate and will turn your video off in like five seconds or less is if you have bad audio. So do you have any tips on like, do you just use the inherent mic on the on the iPhone or do you get an external mic for, uh, for your videos, Dale? I never did get an external mic for mine. I was very careful to project. Um, I did the best I could to protect from wind, but you've got to be able to project into your mic to be able to pick up like that. If not, yeah, they make, you know, they make simple adapter that you can plug right into the jack that will be an external mic uh, to pick up all the way around. That's one of your options. Um, I mean, they make a bunch of different tools for that. So I did not use an external, but I certainly would tell people that if they're not able to project and make sure that they're aware of their sound and their surroundings, that yeah, an external is the way to go, or make sure you do it inside and not outside, because that wind it'll kill you. Yeah, no, 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 no doubt about it. And and, and, fr and frankly, I don't, I don't think anybody can watch a video that has bad audio for more than like a few seconds without just driving them crazy. They can they can deal with the shakiness, they can deal with the bad lighting, but the bad audio yeah. unbearable. You know what? It's funny because when you asked that question earlier, Jimmy, you asked Dale, um, has anyone ever bitched about his audio and video, or said like, hey, your lighting wasn't that good on that third? you know, 314th one, you know, it's funny because Dale, I agree, but I did have some, I've had a lot of people yell at me about the audio. Uh, I've had literally, you know, comments below videos saying, Hey, great video, but the audio was awful. And so, you know, one of the things you guys can look into, I use what's called a Yeti mic. This thing's pretty sick. It actually is, it works on the front door and the back door, Raj, you know, either mm -hmm. <laughs> however you want to roll with it. Are and, you front uh, or in my back? <laughs> listen, let's, let's stop. Maybe I get one uh. on each side, right? Just have a little, <laughs> a little uh, double mic. But, you know, long story short, <laughs> red head, uh, let, let me, I want you guys to tweet this. Listen, I'm on beer three and I'm kind of a, a wimp. Please tweet this. Audio is the red headed stepchild of video. Oh, I, I because, think it's <laughs> yeah, because here's what happens, Jimmy. You do all this stuff Dale's saying, you do all this great work, and then it's like kind of muffled. So, you know, you can boost the audio in the back of YouTube with their editor. You can use Camtasia to boost the audio, but the key is if you're going to do videos with your iPhone, see that little hole right there? See that hole? That hole on the left or your right, that circular one, you can plug a microphone into that and it will give you perfect audio. So check that out for sure. Yeah. You're, you're, you're reminding me why, we, why our shows were supposed to be 25 minutes as opposed to 55 minutes. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, it's, it, it, so that, that, that's, that's something to certainly uh, you know, consider. So let's wrap this up, Chris, because you know, I, I wanted to kind of give everyone kind of some practical takeaways. So let's talk about just before we do that though, real quickly, just different video apps that you love that are worth checking out. Just sort of off the cuff, what do you think you know that you absolutely love that you want to share with these guys today? 
You asking me, Jimmy? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'll go for it. Well, the first one that I'm loving, my new favorite app is Vine, V-I-N-E, yeah. which was made by Twitter. And it's the most amazing UI I've ever seen. Yeah, it's a really cool way to take six second clips. I could see the way Raj does like a three minute uh, video for a listing. I could see the six second Vine being kind of like the little teaser you know, kind of like the little uh, the little warm up, like the little foreplay for the whole video. We might as well roll with the theme, right? So, you know, a little bit of a foreplay for the whole video, like a little six second Vine action. Um, the other can, video app can, that people love, Jimmy, is called Video Licious. Yeah. Uh, video Licious is uh, basically what I call kind of like realtor proof. Uh, you know, you li it literally tells you what to do, what room to film, what the best order is, what the maximum length of a clip. So definitely check out Video Licious. You know, for me personally, I have a folder on my phone. I want to show you guys real quick, and I'm just constantly adding stuff, Jimmy. So you can see I have Vidi Pitch. I have one called Real Moments. Uh, Real Moments lets you take time lapse photography with your mobile phone. So that's an unbelievably cool app. So, uh, so, 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 yeah. so, so do, do me a favor real quick. Take a screen grab of your iPhone screen with the video app and just tweet that out to our guys on Water Cooler right now. Yeah, got and, it. And, and Dale, please do the same thing. Just want to see what video apps you guys are using, which ones you yeah. like, which ones you install. That's a good idea, use. Jimmy. And you know what's funny? I'm going to actually teach people how to do that because half of them don't know. If you hit the top and bottom button at the same time, boom, it takes a picture of your screen. Half the people listening didn't know that, Jimmy. Yeah, and now just go ahead and tweet that out because we're because I, I think it's worth worth sharing. So, uh, all right, Ra Raj, just I, I want you know just kind of in closing here, uh, you know just just going forward here in 2013, if you, if you're just getting started with video for the first time, right? You're an agent. You're listening to this video right now. What advice would you give them just to kind of get themselves started this year and, and, and you know, being someone who just started in 2012, really adopting this technology? Yeah, I think the first thing, you're probably not going to make the big jump and buy everything, right? And depending on your market and your price point, I think the best thing is to find a hyper-local videographer, cinematographer, whatever that might be. And just do one. Do one. And like Dale said, publish it and push it out. Because you can have the most amazing videos and you get three views on YouTube. What the, what's that going to do? You know, so get it, publish it, and push it out. So, hire, so, so fi find the talent first. And then, uh, and then get your first one out the door. That's yeah. actually that's actually a very good point because the thing is too. I think sometimes we 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 fall in the trap of over planning and planning a year in advance, doing a video a week or a video a day without actually ever doing one of them. And you learn a lot with that first experience. Everything you thought you knew, you were just wrong. And then you sort of learn from that experience and go forward. Dale, same same question. Repeat the question. <laughs> <laughs> I was so engrossed in what Raj was saying. Now you know, no. Jim, Jimmy. Jimmy rambles so much; it's so hard to keep this guy focused. Jesus. All right. Well, that's why we have the transcribe feature on YouTube to sort of trans translate the rest of what I'm saying here. Uh, so the question was: You're just getting started with video right now for the first time. You're going to dive into 2013. You made the plunge. Where Where do you begin from your perspective? What do you think is the most important thing to start with? You know what? Especially if people have any intention of getting themselves in front of that camera. The thing I, I continue to encourage people to do, and I'm going to encourage again right this minute, is the best place to start doing video is on Facebook with your friends and their birthdays. Mm. Every single person in your world has a birthday, and there's no better way than to get used to hitting publish than turning that camera on saying, Jimmy, I wanted to wish you a happy birthday. I hope you had an awesome day. Stopping the recording and hit publish. That's the best way to do it every single day to get comfortable and used to it. And I will tell you this, the impact to the people in your world will absolutely love it. And so you're doing a good thing because everybody's saying happy birthday in one way or another, typically typed. Yeah. You stand out on that video, and especially with Facebook, the way they now trunk everything down on birthdays, if you get you know 100 wishes, it sticks them all in that one little category. Guess what doesn't go in that category? My videos. If you put yeah. a photo or a video, those don't get buried away where you don't get to see it. So that would be my big takeaway is start doing birthday videos. Yeah. That gets you comfortable with the camera on your face, yeah. hitting publish. And then work from there. So start small with something that's maybe even non-business related is what you're saying. Yeah, Jim, Jimmy, I, I just had an idea. When D D Dale just gave me an idea. 
if you guys have never done a video and you just want to do one so that you get it out of the way, Stick do it on one my for wall. me. Yeah, do one for me and Jimmy, and just tell tell us how great we are. We'll we'll be happy to watch that. Um, I'll tell you, pushing, <laughs> hitting, <laughs> hitting send that first time is going to be brutal. But don't watch it. We, we had we had some great tips in the show, Chris. And you just think you just sort of ruined it right there. <laughs> no, we no. But here's here's the takeaway. I want people to go do a video. You know, remember Darren yeah. on stage? He would say, "If you've never do, done a video, you're doing one right now." So do a video. Do a 15, 20 second video. Yeah. Send it to Jimmy. Tell him, you know, hey, don't let Chris get you so flustered. You know, that's just how he is. You know, you're doing a great job. And uh, you know, I think it's I think it's money. So, you know, well, what you know, a great show, Jimmy. The one thing I want to say before we lose all the audience is that because we run these, <laughs> uh, because we run all these live on YouTube, they're available for replay as soon as it's over. So, uh, YouTube.com/slash Curator TV, and you can watch the replay as soon as we're done, which is super cool. And then the other thing is, if you guys aren't getting our emails for these, if you heard about this on Twitter. <laughs> or on Facebook, go to curator.com. There's a button at the top that says kind of join our email list, and we send out a text message and an email every time we go live, and then we'll send the recording tomorrow. So I just want to give a little bit of a plug there, Jimmy. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that, that's going to be it for today, guys. Not really a big informal closing, but I want to thank everyone for tuning in. I hope you guys got some real valuable tips, and uh, we're going to see you next week. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Jimmy. I want to Thanks, say guys. thank you uh, real quick to Dale. Dale, you're one of the nicest guys I've ever known, dude, in the industry. And what you're doing for Bobby, oh, look at Steph. What you're doing for Bobby is just a continuation of what you do for everyone. So if people don't know you, dude, you're a fucking awesome guy. And Raj, thank I love you, your man. swagger. You know, Inman 100, uh, you are leading by doing. You're not leading by talking. So I appreciate that, brother. So thanks, thanks for the better clothes, Chris. All right, guys. All right, cool. All right, guys. See you, everyone. See you next, See you week. next week. Yep. Peace. Thank you, guys. See thanks. you, everyone. Take care. Bye. Guys. Bye, Raj.